You're right. He won't dance again. You know why? Because he's dead. Brass monkey. That funky monkey. Brass monkey chunky. That funky monkey. What's going on, everybody? My name is Matt, aka Chunky Monkey Games, and today we're going to be doing another serious type review. And today we're taking a look at the recently ended season three of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, aka the best Arrowverse show. Don't at me. For those who don't watch the show, I highly recommend you do that because we're definitely going into spoiler territory. But if you don't care, then uh, go right for it. This, this video will contain spoilers for Legends of Tomorrow Season 3. So, if you're wary about spoilers, you haven't watched the season yet, definitely uh, tread with caution. There, there's a, there's a phrase for you. Now personally, I think that this was probably the best season of Legends of Tomorrow that we've had yet. Um, that's not saying much considering there's only been three so far, but I still think this is probably the best season of the show we've had. And I'd like to think that's probably the best season out of any of the current Arrowverse shows, um, maybe with the exception of Black Lightning, because Black Lightning's pretty dang cool. The thing I love the most about Legends of Tomorrow in general is just that it's able to take the most absurd, silly concepts and turn them into something serious and, like, actually have it make sense in the lore. Whereas, whereas a show like Arrow can't do, you know, like, oh, they can't have a giant toy uh, beat up another guy, beat up their beat up their main villain, you know, they can't have that as, a, as an ending. But Legends can do that, because it's, it's ab absurd enough, and it's grounded in the, the, the lore that they set up for themselves, and uh, it works because it's so absurd, and that's what I love about this show. Legends is able to get serious and what it needs to be, but for the most part, it's a pretty funny and just lighthearted, enjoyable show, and it does both of these things really well, which is very surprising, uh, considering who's writing this show. Um, if you don't know, uh, Mark Guggenheim, the guy who writes Arrow, which if you've watched Arrow this season, you know, it ain't too good. He's also a writer on Legends, so I don't know how you can have two shows on the complete opposite ends of the spectrum, I will never know, but this season was pretty dang good. <laughs> So now we're about to get into the spoilery stuff, so once again, spoiler warning, if you haven't watched it yet, I recommend that you do so. This season of Legends takes place, obviously, after the second season, where everybody's, they all start off, the Legends have quote-unquote disbanded for the time being, uh, as the time, as Rip, Rip Hunter has uh, started the, uh, the Time Bureau, they've taken over the whole fixing anachronisms, uh, aberrations, whatever they used to call them, now they're calling them anachronisms, so I'm sticking with that. But they have the Time Bureau fixing anachronisms, so the Legends are out of a job, but they're just like, hey, wanna wanna reform the legends? And they're like, sure. And then uh, over the course of the first few episodes, we're introduced to uh, the main big bad of the season, Mollus, who's like a time demon type thing. And they need to enlist the help of all kinds of new characters. Uh, well, not really new characters, but they have all kinds of characters coming in. Like they have uh, Wally West comes in through the middle of the season. Uh, John Constantine comes in for a couple episodes. And, you know, it's just generally... Um, a, a well put together uh, storyline, I guess. The plot, it all works. It makes sense. They have, you know, they have a villain to fight and the thing. I'm the worst reviewer ever. Now, I think the one of the best things about Legends of Tomorrow is that it being a group show, they still manage to give all the characters their own time in the spotlight, and it doesn't take away from their character or anybody else's. So you can develop one character and have it not mess with uh, the arc of another, and that's what I really appreciate about this show, and that's the, the, the chemistry between all the characters is great, the actors clearly enjoy what they're doing and are, also have great chemistry together, and I think that's really what makes the show as enjoyable as it is. This season especially, it just felt the dialogue and the, and the way they interact with each other, the line delivery, it all felt so organic because they've been, to, uh, obviously they've been together for a few seasons, but uh, even the new characters like Zari and uh, Wally, who hasn't necessarily been with this group uh, for very long, they still all have really good chemistry together, and it just it just fits really well. You know, it's it's great. With the show being a time travel show, that gives them all kinds of opportunities to use uh, all these different zany uh, scenarios, like the pirate episode, the uh, the what's it, the 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 Bebo episode, the Vikings, the, uh, the the time loop episode. They're able to do so much. They're able to do so many different concepts, and it doesn't take away from the show, because, again, much like the, uh, 
the, the, the scenarios in general, they just, they, they fit into the lore and it all, it all just works. It just works. The show just works. Getting into the uh, character arcs this season, um, we had a lot of really good ones. Uh, some of them were a little bit lackluster and they didn't really pay off, but I did really enjoy, um, like, uh, Sarah Lanta's arc, Nate and Amaya's arc. They all had really good arcs, but then again, there's also other characters that didn't have much development, like we had, uh, like Zari, like they built her up as having like this big, uh, like red, they gave her this whole inner conflict and then they didn't pay it off in the end of the season, which kind of bugged me. There was uh, Ray, who didn't really do too much this season. They didn't really do much with him in the first half anyways. The second half was when he had like the whole thing for uh, uh, Nora Dark, but that wasn't really fleshed out until the last few episodes, so I felt like that could have probably been they probably could have started earlier in the season and then they, you know, spread it out a little bit. Um, Wally, I like how they kind of continued his arc from uh, when he left The Flash. Because when he left The Flash, we were kind of like, well, what the heck? What's Wally doing? And then they, you know, they, they kept they kept elements of that and they forwarded it over. Like his, uh, like his, like his breakup with um, Jesse Quick. Um, the fact that he went to, like, find inner peace, which we didn't know he did after The Flash. They didn't address it at all. But... They, they address it in this, and they, they're keeping our boy Wally West alive and well. That's what I'm talking about. Of course, uh, during the crossover, we, we lost a couple members of uh, the Legends. We lost uh, Martin Stein due to a death, and then the other half of Firestorm, Jefferson Jackson, a.k.a. my boy Jax, uh, left the team voluntarily because he didn't feel useful. Um, he did come back for the finale, though, which I did appreciate, but then again, he still didn't really do much. His arc was okay, I suppose. Uh, in that he, he was trying to separate Firestorm the whole time. Uh, they didn't really kind of do much else with him. They kind of like, all right, you're, you're going to want to separate Firestorm. And then once that's separated, you're just, you're just out. I mean, I know the actor wanted out, but, you know, they probably could have given Jax a better arc, especially because Firestorm is such a cool character, or characters, I should say, that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed they didn't flesh that out a little bit more. But, again... What they did with them was fine, I guess, because it was kind of they kind of wanted to write, they had to write the actors off the show somehow, so they had to write the characters off, which I can understand. Uh, Mick Rory, he's he's just as uh, he's just as him as ever. In addition to Zari and Wally, there were a couple other th new characters thrown into the mix, like uh, Ava Sharp and uh, our, and Gary of the uh, Time Bureau. Shout out to Gary, he's my man's. Uh, kind of like this is kind of similar with uh, with Ray. But they didn't really flesh out uh, Ava's character until like the third to last episode, where she was. They found out she was a clone, which I they probably could have hinted at that earlier. Uh, I mean, they they hinted at it a couple episodes before the clone episode, but still they didn't really hint at it at all. They only bothered with it until the whole uh, relationship with Sarah, but they didn't really. Again, they didn't really flesh that out much. There wasn't, there wasn't any resolution to her inner conflict. She was all conflicted about being a clone, yet they didn't show her coming to terms with that. She just, like, left, and then she came back in the finale and was like, Hey, what's up, guys? It's like, what? You kidding me? You're just gonna, you're just gonna do this? All right, I see how it is. And then Gary, of course, the, 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 the lovable goofball of the uh, Time Bureau. Uh, I, I, I mean, he's not... I, I get that he's not supposed to be, like, a, a big character, and uh, he's pretty much just a comic relief character. And I like how they used him for comic relief, so much so, and they, they, did, they did this so well that people were theorizing online that like that Gary was secretly Mollus in human form, which I thought would have been hilarious if they actually did it, but they didn't. I don't, I don't mind. Uh, Gary is a funny character. I really hope they bring him back for uh, season four because he, he brought a lot of uh, comedic moments to, uh, to the show uh, when there might not have necessarily been any. So that's... That's a dub in my book. Uh, let's talk about the villains for this season. Uh, we have, obviously, Mollus. Um, then Damien Dark returns from uh, last season. And uh, now his daughter, Nora Dark, is part of the, uh, the, the, the crew. The new Legion of Doom, which was, like, what, three people? And there's also uh, Kuwasa, uh, Maya's granddaughter from 2018. And uh, those, were, those were really the only villains. There weren't really any other notable villains this season. But I will say, Kuasa had a good redemption arc uh, near the end of the season. Much like some of the other characters, they didn't do much in the first half of the season, mostly because they were teeing up crossover stuff. Nora Dark had a weird 
arc this season. She was, you know, pure evil, but then Rey was like, hey, you wanna not be evil? And she was like, uh, okay. Which I thought felt kind of forced to me because the actors for um, Rey and Nora are married in real life. I felt like that was kind of forced for them to have a whole relationship type thing, which I thought was kind of not organic. I don't know. I felt at least that they were building something up between Zari and Rey because they had like a couple moments together in the when Zari was first introduced. So I thought they were building that towards something, but then it was like, no, they did a complete 180 in the second half of the season when um, they uh, introduced Nora, and it was like, okay, I, I see where you're going with this, but this still feels pretty forced because they wanted to do stuff with the actors in real life. They want to do this whole meta thing, which I can appreciate for this show in particular because it, this show is just so meta in general, but I don't know, it felt forced to me. I didn't mind it. Uh, I, I could see Nora coming back as maybe a legend or like a recurring uh, guest star or something next season. Uh, I could see her doing a redemption arc or something if they do decide to bring her back as a series regular, which I don't necessarily see them doing. I could maybe see, their, see her coming back as a recurring guest star, but I don't know. I, wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't mind whatever they did with her character, to be honest. And as for uh, Mollus, he was... Um, not fleshed out at all. They built him up as like this evil time demon guy. They're like, oh, it's Mollus. But they built they built Mollus up as this big, huge threat, and then he was easily defeated within an episode. Which I don't know. It felt felt kind of dumb to me, honestly. I can almost I can kind of appreciate it because le the premise of Legends is that it's 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 dumb enough to where it's you're just like, wow, this is so dumb, but I love it. It's it's that kind of show, and I feel like Mollus was their attempt at. Doing, doing that kind of concept, but with a character, with a villain. But they didn't really give Mollus enough, uh, you know, like, they didn't give, I mean, I get that he's like a, an immortal time demon spanning across uh, time, but like, come on, give, our, give him a little bit of motivation other than being evil, you know? I mean, he, he kind of had the Vandal Savage problem where he was just evil for the sake of being evil, but there was no reason for the, I mean, other than Rip Hunter telling them, oh, th this guy's bad, uh, you know, there was really no reason for the Legends to care other than like, oh yeah, we kind of have to save the timeline. Just in saying this out loud, I'm tearing my own argument apart. What am I doing? <laughs> anyway, Mollus, not, not exactly my preferred villain, but he's a fun villain nonetheless, I suppose, at least in the last uh, few episodes. Probably the best villain of the season, Damien Dark. I never I never thought I'd say that sentence in my life. This season of Legends did for Damien Dark what they failed to do in Arrow Season 4 and semi-failed to do last season of Legends. Damien Dark is like the Negan of, of Legends. Like, Negan on The Walking Dead is, he's just... He's, the, he's a villain, you want to hate him, but he's so charismatic and funny that you're like, okay, this is a cool guy. That's what Damien Dark is for Legends. He has all kinds of like funny moments of him being just evil for the sake of it, and he's for him it works. It just works, because the actor sells it, it's great. Like he had, a, he had a whole bunch of great moments this season, especially with his arc of uh, wanting, he wants to free Mollus to just, you know, cause destruction, rebuild the world in his image, but he also wants to save his daughter, which he can't, they can, he can't do both, so um, there's a nice conflict there. I I almost wanted him to come back as a legend next season, as a as a good guy next season, but uh, unfortunately they killed him off in the uh, final episode, which kind is kind of messed up. But I can understand why they did it. I don't know if the actor wanted off the show or if he's coming back next season. Damian Dark, he was so much better this season than he was last season of Legends, where. He was he wasn't really focused on because it was more of a group a, a group of villain a group of villains not uh, just one villain and in Arrow season four he was just not charismatic as all at all he was just hey look I'm evil I <laughs> choke you with my my force whatever but this season of Legends sold me on his character made me like him as a character and made me actually feel something when he died because it was like oh you didn't have to do that he died a hero he turned to the good side. I don't know. Is he's, he's a good. He's a, Damian Dark was a good this season. Now let's talk about the uh, most problematic character. I think, at least for me, this season, uh, our boy, former captain of the Wave Rider, Rip Hunter, time former Time Master. He's he's our boy. He's our skinny Brit in a trench coat. He's my man's. Last season, I understood. I can understand why he he was the way he was that season. 
because he was, you know, he wasn't himself for a while, he was evil for a while, and then he was like, okay, now I'm back with the team. But this season, he was just, like, absent for most of it. Most of the time, he was in time prison or something, I don't remember what. He was in prison for crimes against time, and then when he came back, he was just, you know, he was chilling with the Time Bureau, so he wasn't doing anything with the Legends up until the uh, the first, like, 30 minutes of the last episode when he was like, all right, guys, I gotta, I gotta suit up, I'm gonna help you guys out, I'm gonna... Uh, fight Mollus with you guys. As soon as he put on that trench coat, he started talking to Gideon. I was like, no, why would you do this? And, uh, of course, Rip Hunter sacrifices himself to keep Mollus at bay. I don't particularly like how they killed him off. I personally think he'll definitely be coming back uh, next season. Uh, there's it, Just the way it was written, the, the swiftness in which he went from being a background character to being like, alright, I'm gonna sacrifice myself, um, just so casually, it just makes me feel like, oh, this death is definitely not permanent. Like, Rip Hunter started this team, and I, I feel like if they were going to kill him off, like, for good, they would do it in a more uh, meaningful, more climactic way um, than uh, the way they did it here. I mean, I don't mind how they did it, but it felt really anticlimactic to me. He had no build-up for anything all season. He didn't really do anything all season. And then it's just at the end, he's like, all right, guys, I got to sacrifice myself. But it didn't really didn't really mean anything, because the season, his, his character arc this season was just nothing. I mean, you know, he did have the previous two seasons of character development and um, whatnot to, to, you know, to make us care about him as a character, but he wasn't around enough for me to actually care that much. I mean, granted, I think Rip Hunter is an awesome character, he's just so cool with that trench coat and that laser, laser gun, the laser revolver, it's just so cool. But that's about all there is to his character for me, is that he's he's cool. He's a cool guy, and he's he's just he's killing it out here, you know? I don't really like what they did with Rip Hunter this season. I don't know if he'll be coming back next season. I really hope that he does, and they find some way to be like, oh, he's actually alive uh, still. So I'd be down with that if he... I mean, I'd be down either way, honestly. If they brought him back, that's cool. In fact, I feel like they should bring him back as a series regular. But it depends on what the actor wants to do. So if the actor wants out and they want to get Rip off the show, I don't mind. But uh, Rip to Rip. Am I right? Get it? Get it? R.I.P. Rip. His name is Rip. I did a thing. I did a meme. Moving on to the uh, writing and uh, structure and pacing and all that. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the thing I love the most about Legends, more than anything else, is the fact that they can take the most ridiculously dumb, stupid, silly concepts and turn them into something awesome and serious and something you want to watch. A perfect example of which is uh, our lord and savior, Abibo, the CW. Whoever's, whoever's running the, the show over there, Warner Brothers, CW, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who's running the show, who, I gotta, who, who, who do I gotta beg here to get some, uh, to get some Bebo merch, but uh, can we get some Bebo merch please? Some merch! of our lord and savior. You know, you got episodes with them fighting uh, Gorilla Grodd in Vietnam. They're, they're uh, you know, doing a whole Stranger Things E.T. ripoff with, uh, with what's his name, uh, young Ray Palmer. Uh, you know, they have all these silly episodes. In their descriptions, you'd think, oh, this is just going to be filler. But they end up actually progressing the plot or progressing uh, a certain character. Um, and it's, they're just, it's just a great way to do the show. They can get away with a lot more than uh, a lot of the other Arrowverse shows can um, because their the other shows are more grounded, like Black Lightning, Arrow, Flash, they're all more grounded in um, the universe and the, and the lore that they have set up over there. But Legends, they have their own set of rules, their own lore, their own just everything that they're able to just do all the crazy stuff they want with real, no real consequences. I think above anything else, Legends works best as uh, just like a fun, it's just a fun show. It's not like an Arrow where it's the, the fun of the show comes from like the drama and the, the, the characters. I mean, I can't exactly say such a thing for this season of Arrow, but regardless, the fun of Legends doesn't come from the drama or the or the the dark the serious stuff it comes from the silly concepts the the funny characters the funny moments just all of it just it's 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 epitomized in this season this season does the best job out of any of the seasons of legends of using the the funny characters and the funny concepts that they do have and and meshing them together to make just a wonderful show that i in my opinion is the best of the arrowverse shows there's so many just fun 
moments and episodes in this show that is it, it, that's why it's so good. Like you know, you have the time loop episode with Zari where she's you know doing the montage with the with the cue cards. It's just it, that's great. You got the 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 introduction of Wally West where he's running around with Rip Hunter singing Careless Whisper. It's great. It's perfect. Never gonna dance again. Skeleton feet of God, no rhythm. And of course, Bebo. Give me that Bebo merch, please. So all in all, to finish off this video. Um, Legends of Tomorrow Season 3 was definitely the best season of Legends that we've had so far. <clears throat> Not only is it the best season of Legends, but it's also probably the best superhero show on the CW right now. Or at least it was before the season ended, but you know what I mean. So, with that being said, let me know what you thought of Legends of Tomorrow Season 3 down in the comments below. Uh, you can also, if you want to discuss it, join my Discord where we can, we can discuss it all you want. Um, Leave a comment, uh, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, if you want to see more videos like this. Um, and uh, that's all for this video. My name is Matt, aka Chunky Monkey Games. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Praise Bebo.